adaptations of visual novels to anime are something of a mixed bag. Sometimes, with, like with Kanad and Comic Party, the adaptation is a hit. Other times, like Tsukihime, it doesn't quite work that well. Fate Stay Night falls kind of into the former case, though there are some times where the work significantly stumbles in its execution. Particularly on the animation front, though there are some narrative issues. The series follows Shiro Emiya, an 18-year-old high school student who is approaching graduation, and is planning to join the JSDF to fulfill his childhood dream of being a hero of justice. As with most rom-com heroes, he has a female childhood friend who is something of a Yamato Nadeshko archetype, Sakura Mato. He has some slight magic ability that allows him to recognize faults in electronic components and, to a degree, mend them. However, life has other plans in store with him, and while the setup of the series might imply that this is a harem comedy, the game's, which is the show's source material, is quite the opposite. Instead, Shiro has been selected to be one of the masters in the Holy Grail War, a tournament held among mages to determine who is worthy to make a wish from the Holy Grail, each master serving a servant who fits various classes, each servant being the spirit of some heroic figure from legend and myth. These classes are Caster, who can cast spells on their own, that's by the name, Assassin, who are sneaky bastards, Archer, who can use ranged attacks, Rider, who can summon a mount for improved mobility. Lancer, who, surprising, who not surprisingly uses a spear. Berserker, who has great physical strength, but is seemingly not very bright. And Saber, who uses a sword. Now, Shiro ends up summoning Saber, and gets drugged into this without knowing what he's getting into, and purely by accident, well, summoning Saber, and in particular... The heroic spirit he gets is King Arthur, or rather, Arturia Pendragon, the real King Arthur being a woman who passed herself off as a man after drawing the sword from the stone. Shiro forms an alliance with one of his classmates, Rin Tosaka, who is a more accomplished magus and another participant in the tournament, and who was a complete tsundere for Shiro. Rin has drawn Archer, whose identity is unknown even to her. Shiro learns that the incident who left him orphaned as a child, and led to him being adopted by another Magus, was a result of the previous Holy Grail War. In order to prevent a similar incident from happening to others, and in the hopes of using his wish to become a true hero of justice, he and Saber decide to win the Grail War. The animation for the series is done by Studio Dean, and this is made in what I described as their dark period, after their high points in the 80s with works like Angel's Egg, which I've previously reviewed, see the doobly-doo, and before their modern redemption with Konosuba and Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju, Shinju. This leads to some weird animation moments, such as clear moments where dialogue scenes are, de clear, are definitely taken off camera to avoid having to animate mouth movements and that sort of thing. Also, some of the action scenes seem very under-animated, including some of the show's more significant fights, like Archer's battle with Berserker. It feels like a deliberate attempt to save money on the animation budget so they can go all out in the series finale, which certainly has an incredibly dramatic animation brump, so dramatic that it feels like it was animated by a completely different studio. That said, the show's music is generally good, with a score composed by Kenji Kawai, who is known for his work on Ghost in the Shell, uh, though the scope of the music feels, once again, limited by budget, as if he envisioned the music would be played by live musicians, only to inform that all they could really afford was a really nice synthesizer loaded with some really good MIDI voices. The writing, though, is also very good. The women, particularly Saber, Rin, Taiga, and Ilya, are all very interestingly and entertainingly written characters with some great character beats. In particular, Miti, Amiki Ito, and I apologize for mangling her name, as Taiga, livens up pretty much every scene she's in in the work, and you can almost feel her energy liven up the rest of the cast and, and the scenes that she shares with them. That said, some of the writing around the character of Shiro stumbles. He's overly patronizing of Saber, and in particular, early in the series he's unwilling to acknowledge or even recognize her combat skills to a very real degree, choosing to fight instead of her, even when it's been demonstrated to him on multiple occasions that, he is, that she is far better with the sword than pretty much everyone. 
Later in the series, he allows a better degree of trust, but it is very frustrating to watch early on in the show. Later on in the series, the show develops a twist which comes more or less out of nowhere, but it introduces one of the show's better antagonists, so I'll cut them some slack for that. Dean's version of the Fate Route has more comedy than the UFO Table versions of the show as well. This isn't to say UFO Table's work is comedy-free. Several of Rin's reaction shots are so wonderfully comic as to have been heavily mined for reaction images. However, the staff who worked on the show at Dean are clearly more aware of their limitations as a studio, and chose to put more emphasis on comedy to counteract their issues with some of the action scenes while still making the show very enjoyable. This leads to a series that, while not an outright comedy, has more emphasis on the comedic elements of the story and comedic characters like Taiga than UFO Table's adaptation of Unlimited Blade Works did. As far as whether you should watch the show, UFO Table has spent more time in this universe than Dean had, with prequel Fate Zero, the Unlimited Blade Works anime, which adapts another route through the same game, and the upcoming films adapting the Heaven's Feel path through the game. Fate Zero also sets up the rules of the Grail War, much like this one does, but Fate Zero frontloads the exposition with a massive info dump in the first double-length episode, while this show paces the exposition better and explains some concepts that Fate Zero doesn't get into, like how the magic system works. And further, Saber's backstory is not explored as heavily in Fate Zero and Unlimited Blade Works, to the point that these series effectively assume that you know already where Saber is coming from in terms of her history. This is in part due to how, at least in the case of Unlimited Blade Works, how the game worked. Each of the paths had to be played through in sequence, and these, well, anime adaptations of the game have been keeping with this sequence. This anime mostly adapts, primarily focuses on the Fate route. Unlimited Blade Works is obviously on the Unlimited Blade Works route, and Heaven's Feel is going to be adapting the Heaven's Feel route. So, they assume that you all, so the routes that they are, that are being adapted in those other works assume knowledge that, theoretically, if you owned the game and were playing through it multiple times, you would have. So, there's that to keep in mind. Now, Fate Zero is currently in print and available from Sentai Filmworks, which means that this is probably the most affordable way to get into Fate. The UFO Table uh, film series. Um, the stuff that's out has been licensed by Aniplex of America. The films are probably also going to be licensed by Aniplex of America, which means they're going to cost you an arm and a leg. Sentai, on the other hand, this release is fairly affordable. You can probably get the whole show on Blu ray for less than $40, or probably 35 bucks with the show itself being available for streaming on High Dive, since Anime Network is a thing that's not going to exist by the time this episode goes live, and presumably also available on Hulu. I don't believe it's available for streaming on Netflix, but Sentai's prolific with where they license their stuff, so like, Viewster will probably have it in some other places. So, as far as the gateways to the Fate universe, this is probably the best narrative gateway, in terms of if you're looking for really good animation and good action scenes and that sort of thing, the later adaptations fare significantly better. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.